Families of the murdered Credo Paul, anti-apartheid activists are continuing their fight for justice, turning this time to the courts to force authorities to prosecute those responsible for their deaths. Journalist and son of uh, Fort Kalata, Lukanyo Kalata, joins me now uh, to talk more on this. Lukanyo, good evening and uh, it's good to have you with us tonight here on uh, In Focus. Tell me, man, what is behind the failure to finalize this case? I mean, if you had to uh, distill it and, and get to the granular details. Well, Tabo, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having us on. Well, two words, political interference. Yeah, and at the highest level? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we would venture as far as to say uh, at the level of uh, office of the president of both the country as well as of the African National Congress, uh, during the uh, Mbeki administration. So we think that it went as far as that. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, they had, you know, decided that TRC cases should not be prosecuted. But we are convinced that the reason why these cases, we are still, you know, treading water, we are still at, at exactly the same place where we were in, uh, in 1985, in 1994, um, you know, I mean, it's 2021 now. And the reason why we are still here is because of political interference from as high an office as the president of the country. We are in 2021. What are the obvious uh, uh, indicators for you, the telltale signs that, that convince you beyond a shadow of the doubt that uh, there is political interference right now? Well, look at the judgment from the Supreme Court of Appeal in the matter uh, of Timol versus uh, João Rodriguez, or at least the state versus João Rodriguez, where Rodriguez had gone to the Supreme Court of Appeal to try and have the matter stayed, uh, you know, his, his, his prosecution for murder stayed. And just what the judgment that came out of a full bench of the Supreme Court of Appeal basically the court saying that there is irrefutable proof of political uh, interference uh, from the officers of, of the executive. And, you know, and that's unconstitutional because the, the Constitution and the NPA Act grants the NDPP, the National Director of Public Prosecution, the sole responsibility to be able to decide which matters to prosecute or not. It, that decision should never be made by the minister or by the president or, you know, and have some political uh, a team gather around to say this one must be prosecuted and this one not. No. What happened here, according to a judgment of the Supreme Court of Appeal, was that clear, clear signs of political interference. And what is this new approach now that you're taking, approaching uh, the courts to force the authorities to prosecute? I mean, uh, what exactly are you asking the courts to do and how successful do you think this particular approach is going to be? Right, Tabo, if I can just quickly take a step back. Now, today, obviously, we've gone to the court and today marks the 36th anniversary of the funeral of the Credo Four. Now, a couple of weeks ago on uh, the 27th of June, which was actually the date that my father and his colleagues, Matthew Gornio, as part of Contest, Stellum Clowley, that when they actually disappeared, the uh, NPA and the Hawks issued a joint statement saying that they are now committed. You know, their time is against them. They are now definitely, definitely, they put together teams to be able to prosecute, uh, uh, you know, these apartheid and TRC cases, and that the time was now. So in essence, what we've done is basically say, okay, if you're saying that you are committed to prosecuting, right, now, within 30 days after the court's order, now, uh, the, 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 NP, the, N, uh, the NDPP, sorry, within 30 days of the court's order, the Hawks, the uh, Minister of Police and the Minister of uh, the uh, National Commissioner of Police, Ketlas Tole, they must ensure that the Hawks finalize their investigations into the uh, murders of the Craddock Four. And then, within 60 days of the court's order, 
the NDPP must give us a decision as to whether or not she is going to prosecute those people that have been linked to the murders of the Craddock Four. So this is exactly what we're asking them. And, and, and we just want a court to put in place a deadline to say from this date to this date, you must do this. From this date to, do, to this date, you must do this. You know that in the industry that you and I work in, we're all driven about deadlines, yeah. right? So we understand those deadlines. And it seems that for us, at least, that the Hawks and the NPA, they've had no deadlines when dealing with the matters of the credit four. So all we're asking the court is just to say, put deadlines in. Let this not be another 20 years of investigations. Let this not be... You know, let us not be sitting here in 10 years' time still saying, oh, please prosecute. Instead, we want the court to give us those, or give the Hawks those deadlines and the N uh, NDPP those deadlines so that we can ensure that the matter of the credit for is speedily resolved. It sounds like two simple requests, but of course we know these things never go as easy as this, and there will be all sorts of reasoning and uh, uh, all sorts of justification why it would need to take longer. But uh, talk to me about the far-reaching impact. I mean, it's been uh, uh, more than two decades. The far-reaching impact, uh, particularly on the families uh, of those affected in this ongoing uh, prosecution matter that refuses to come to uh, the, the head. Tabo, on the 29th of August um, last year, Mrs. Goniwe died. Right. Mrs. Goniwe was, was, was almost like a second mother to me and my sisters. She was the godmother, actually, to my younger sister. She was there throughout everything. So when she died, I remember just how emotional it was for my mom. You know, I mean, I couldn't speak to her because she, she really was crying. And she died without ever having see, uh, seen justice for her husband, for the father of her two children. So I don't think that there's any greater sense of loss, any greater impact than that. Now, I don't want that to happen to my mother. I surely don't want that to happen to Mrs. Mclaudy. I don't want that to happen to Mrs. Mkondo. I wouldn't want that to happen to Umamaganoktula uh, Simelani. I wouldn't want that to happen to any of, of, of them Tlenge children and family. It is time that we are rid of this sense of waiting for something to happen. Till when must we wait for our father's lives to be afforded some sense of dignity, to be afforded a value yeah. under a government of the African National Congress. My father died pursuing the interests of the African National Congress. Matthew Goniwe, his comrade, died pursuing the interests of the African National Congress. So too did Stelum Cloud and Sparum Kondo. Are they not deserving of justice? Uh, do their lives not mean anything? Because if they don't, then the ANC must tell us. They must tell us that, you know what, your father's life doesn't mean anything to us, and therefore we're not going to prosecute. Then at least we know. Yeah. Then we can deal with whatever we need to deal with thereafter. But as long as they keep on repeating this notion of a constitutional democracy, where the rule of law means something, where, where everyone is equal before the law. If they keep on repeating that to us, then they must put their money where their mouths are and they must prosecute the murderers of the Craddock Four because we've been, ba we've been waiting for far too long. Look, Kanye, the other thing that you say you've been waiting for is proof that they went to former President F.W. de Klerk to get a statement. Are you still convinced that that has not been done? Well, I mean... It, Look, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. The NPA must be able to, or, or, or the Hawks at least, the investigators, must be able to put out their, uh, you know, their investigations. And they must say to us, this is what we've done. Uh, we are now at this point. 
within the next couple of days, we will be here. We will be ready to prosecute because we don't know, Tabo. Remember, my father was killed 36 years ago. On this day, 36 years ago, he was buried. I was three years old at the time. I'm almost going to be, this year, I'm 40, my brother. You know? So the NPA has had 36 years, or 27 at least, in the democratic South Africa. We, we, we will forget about the other nine years under apartheid. But they've had 27 years to investigate and to prosecute. and to So they must now show us how far they are. You know, and, and, and if they can't do that to us, then the court must force them to show us uh, uh, how far the investigations are. And the court must tell them that they only have 30 days to finalize an investigation they should have done decades ago. So, uh, you know, we can't wait anymore. Lukanyo Talata, appreciate your time and thank you for joining us tonight. Journalist and son of Fort Talata, Lukanyo Talata, they, they are going to the court. Two things they're demanding that the NPA uh, or the Hawks, uh, the investigators, finalize their investigations in uh, 60 days and in 30 days thereafter, uh, the, uh, or rather within 60 days, uh, then uh, the NPA must make a declaration on whether or not they will prosecute.